and this is uh, Ed in San Diego, California, and my very special guest again on Global TV is uh, Aneta uh, Dernick in Cologne, uh, Germany, and I really am blessed to have you again on our show in this one-on-one. -on -one. Let's talk about uh, love and peace and companies and your most recent experiences on the circuit. You were just out really busy in the past couple of weeks, as I understand. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. So I am at present, I'm preparing a new speech. So I'm a speaker and I'm also a coach. And I also love to support entrepreneurs to bring more peace and more love into the companies. And um, sometimes people are looking at me like this. Um, so what about love in a company? And um, <laughs> That it's not about um, a rendezvous um, uh, in the lunch break. No, what I mean is uh, more the love, um, let's say, from heart to heart. So I also have the saying, um, it's important to have heart to heart communication. And um, if I as an employee feel appreciated, if I am treated in an appreciative way, then my work for the company is much different from the one when I'm controlled, when I have to fulfill things without understanding. And um, yes, I think you, you know what I mean. Yes, yeah. So the idea is uh, in, in America, uh, the, the, the rage here is to uh, have a duty to care, not a duty of care, but a duty to care, very proactive, um, taking care of your people, being more human and not dictatorial, more collaborative and learning about the people uh, and welcoming them to express themselves. Is that going on in Germany too? Um, it's not that we have something, let's say, like a common sense on this. It's more that um, we, in Germany, we start talking about positive leadership and um, companies really realize that they can increase their profit with this attitude of appreciation of love and peace in companies. And um, I have several colleagues, I'm a member of um, GSA of the German Speakers Association. And so we also have several talks and there are several members who have the, let's say, same mindset as I have. And we all have the same experience. If we support companies and their owners to really implement this attitude. And for me, it's also a difference to, let's say, um, having somebody who tells me that I should be nice and really being nice from inside myself. And um, the experience that we really have is with this attitude, people love to work for this company. They are really um, maybe not enthusiastic, but they really love their company. And um, yeah, they share their experience with their neighbors, their family and so on. And this automatically attracts other employees as well. And so it's great that you already have something like this in the US. And I really hope that it works. Well, it's not everywhere, I have to tell you, <laughs> but uh, more more progressive and more enlightened uh, of the uh, C-suite uh, is uh, already embracing that, uh, particularly uh, now. Uh, here we are in uh, uh, post-pandemic and company, many companies, uh, Many staffs are going back into the office uh, because uh, it's where the action is. Uh, not full time. No, hybrid is here to stay. But there is uh, a new use of repurposing of uh, the, the real company real estate to bring people together rather than cubicles is to clear those away and have more collaborative environments. Uh, because uh, then it's an occasion to come back in the office rather than uh, a, a trap, you know, being there, work, work, work. Uh, because you, you can do work outside of the office space. It's been proven. Yes. So there are several aspects that you uh, mentioned. So first of all, yes, 
Um, and I, I can also see that um, people um, are also kind of longing to go back to the office to meet other people because to be sitting in front of the computer working on an, on one's own for the whole day or sitting um, in one Zoom meeting after the other, um, it cannot replace the um, interaction and the communication really from human to human. So in my opinion, it's more that um, it's on a voluntary basis that people want to go back to the office. And um, the other thing is, um, in my opinion, we um, artificial intelligence is just about to start. And um, so therefore, it's also important to really connect with humans um, in a positive way to also exchange ideas and to have, let's say, a common mindset. And what you mentioned at the beginning of collaboration, yeah, that's for me, let's say, the new kind of new age, that it will be collaboration instead of conflicts. It will be um, collaborate, uh, yeah, collaboration um, instead of um, confrontation. And I'm really sure that if people won't change then it's possible that we won't see them on the market any longer in maybe 10 15 years something like this because that's now the future that we are working together and i see and i think we can also see it that we are now talking here so maybe five years ago it would not have been um not possible technically it was already possible but um, in my opinion, um, the the settings really changed, and so for me, so for me now it's quite common to talk to you. And after our conversation, I'll have two other Zoom meetings um, with people in the United States and some sometimes also South Africa and Canada and other. Um, oh, countries. good for you! Wow. And um, that's also something um, where I think that we realize that we have more in common. That then things that are different um, between people. So let me ask you a question about what's going on in in Germany today, meaning um, th with uh, the, the economy growing uh, or not growing. What's it like in Germany? Would you say the economy is, is strong right now? Or is it just uh, more seasonal? Or is it... Uh, uh, is it the same as it was six months ago or is it different? In my opinion, the um, um, the, the challenge to find um, skilled personnel is really increasing. And I hear really more people um, lamenting that they don't find personnel. Um, I've also already heard about some robots serving meals in restaurants. And... Um, so I would say that there is already a change. And at the same time, if we as people won't change, then we will have difficulties with the change. And uh, I am not no longer talking about change. I'm talking about transformation. And so I would say that there are some companies um, in, in Germany who are doing quite well, um, despite also the, 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 the high interests that we have. I think it's um, the same um, globally. And um, yeah, that's another topic. But, but the most, um, the, the topic that I hear the most is really the one with the employees. Yeah. And is that more male than female, the chatter? Um, I can't feel any difference. It's uh -huh. uh, when I when 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 I meet with entrepreneurs, very it it really starts very quickly. Oh, we, it's so difficult to find people, and then sometimes they have people, and um, people from other countries, and then they kind of have to find ways with the German laws and regulations how to really. Um, allow them to work at the companies because it's not only is so for example if you came over to Germany and you wanted to work here in a company that's not possible just like this there are some regulations that you have to fulfill and um, that's another thing that I hear of companies that they would have um, experienced um, 
uh, um, um, employees, um, but these employees do not get the permission to work in these companies. And mm -hmm. yeah, so that's um, these are the topics um, in my, uh, that I would say are the most discussed um, nowadays. So these are the main topics for your current speaking and coaching. Uh, and uh, now I want to go to uh, a question of how can companies benefit from your personal experience? Companies can benefit because I really help them to resolve conflicts. So just to to tell you a short example, yes. um, on a business in in a business club, I met somebody and um, we were we were talking, and then he said, "Oh, Annette." I really have some problems in my company. I have the impression that the atmosphere is not good and people are talking about each other and not with each other. And I said, okay, I'll just come and have a look. And so what we realized, and that was for me, it was really, um, let's say, interesting. They had been working for about 20 years. They had conflicts that they had for about 20 years. And so there was um, a special conflict. And um, so when I'm working with the teams and also with um, the leaders of the company, sometimes it's good to have, um, let's say, to, to work with just two people. Um, when I say, see that there are conflicts that, are, that really need to be resolved between those two people. And um, so one of the employees, she was sitting like this. Mm -hmm. the... All buttoned up, huh? Woo. And her so, boss was sitting um, uh, face to face on her and I was sitting um, at the same table. And um, yeah, I interrupted then every now and then when I had the impression that it was um, more, let's say, um, on an emotional basis. And you know what happened at the end? The employee, she was sitting like this and it was so great to see kind of her face lighting up, being relieved with the burden of this 20 year old conflict. And so that's what I really do. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so this really helps. And so this was a company um, or is a company. They um, um, they do a lot of work on, on the phone. And um, yeah, really the atmosphere changed. And there was much more creativity and commitment in this company. Yeah, and this really helped to not only stabilize the turnovers, but also to, to increase um, the turnovers and also the atmosphere. And um, as I'm talking about peace, for me, there are two aspects. So one is um, the material increase of profit um, and revenue. And the other one for me is more an immaterial aspect. So when an employee comes home, and I remember these times very well, um, so many years ago, when I came home in the evening, I was really kind of upset with my boss, with the colleagues, with everything that went, went wrong. And I was, for half an hour, we were talking about all these things. And so what an atmosphere is it that I take with me coming home? And if we really have an atmosphere of, of appreciation in, um, in, uh, at work, so I come home and tell people, oh, it was a great day. And even though if we had a conflict, um, the conflicts are not the problem. The problem is how to resolve them. So if I come home in the evening and, and say, oh, we really had a misunderstanding, we had a conflict, but re we resolved it, and now we can work together in a much better way than before. This contributes also to peace in the surrounding of everybody, family, friends, and so on. And for me, peace is not something that starts somewhere very far away. Peace starts with me. It starts within me. And then from myself, I can really share it. And that's what, what is so important for me. And um, to really have it, let's say, all over the world. And I always love to see the globe in your background. And um, the only thing that I can really do and change is to change me, my thoughts, and my attitude. And if I have this attitude of appreciation and um, peace, then I can share it with others. And that's what I do in my coachings and um, in my speeches. And this really has um, an, effect, an effect on everybody who's listening and, and everybody I'm working with. 
Well, this is an abbreviated time with us, and I want you to come back again. We have about six minutes remaining. So to summarize, if I may, peace creates value. Really? Yeah. And Okay. So we've also talked about how companies can derive benefit from this. I would like you to consider explaining, if you can, within 30 seconds, if possible, when that woman discovered peace, you said that she lit up and yes. it was like her color changed, her approach her posture changed it was like she had a feeling of warmth and a feeling of what being welcomed or the resulting uh solving of a problem of a uh, disconnect in my opinion it felt as if she could release a burden that she had been carrying around her for years so when we started our talk, it was um, that she said to her boss, oh, and you said this and this and that. And he was, um, oh, I can't remember. And she, oh, it was about 10 to 15 years ago. And she had always carrying, uh, been carrying this, um, let's say, burden or anger around with her. And then she, she could let it go. And that was really a relief for her. And that's what really happened. And um, I'm, if uh, maybe you know the film um, Singing in the Rain. And, yes, um, of course, and, Singing in the Rain. And yeah. everybody gets wet, but nobody cares. <laughs> yes. And I had the impression <laughs> that when she went out of the room where we had our conflict resolving, she was kind of like dancing in the rain. Uh, it's fun. As we come to a close, you're also an author. T tell me about uh, one or two of your books. So one so far is only published in German. It's called um, The Peace Factor, Finally Peace in the Office. Um, and I would love to be uh, to, to publish it next year in English as well. Another one is uh, maybe you can see it behind me. Um, I was co-authoring Marie Diamond. And um, the title of my contribution is um, Peace Creates Value. And besides this, I've been um, written, I've written a lot of um, uh, co <clears throat> as co-author in many books as to project management, um, communication skills, and also personality. Annette, Annetta Dernick, how can people reach you? So there is my website, www.dernick.eu, like Europe. And um, that's um, this site is in um, German and in English, so everybody um, who is English speaking will find um, the the necessary information. And um, yes, maybe there will also be um, a link um, with video, um, and everybody can really reach me on LinkedIn. And there's only one Annette Danik on LinkedIn. So just reach out, reach out to me, connect me, and it will be a pleasure for me to support you, whatever your challenges are. Thank you for being my guest again on Global TV Talk Show. I welcome you to come back. I do want to inform you that we will be doing another London meeting. Uh, HSBC, the Global Trade Bank, has hosted me now two times, most recently last week, December 7, and it thankfully went quite well. And they said, come on back, let's do it again. So it will be April 23 in London, in person, and also virtual. And then from there, we're going to go on to Paris. And the projected date for Paris will be April 25 or 26, one day. And more on all that later. Yeah, this sounds very, very interesting. I would love to join you. And um, yes, we'll talk about details. Yes. And one, and one of our guests, incidentally, last second here, one of our guests on the recent uh, London meeting uh, was from Berlin, uh, Alexander Langhams uh, from Visum, uh, V-I-S-U-M, which is a immigration firm. He suggested I produce my live meeting with him in Berlin and maybe in June. We're not sure yet. That's another great idea. And at the same time, for me, the distance is quite the same. It's five hours to Berlin, five hours to London, five hours. No, it's about three hours to Paris. So I'm where I'm living in Germany. I'm quite flexible. And I also speak um, English and um, French. So, um, yes, for me, everything's fine. Well, we'd love to have you. 
Thank you, Aneta Dernick, uh, for being on Global TV Talk Show. Have a great day. Thank you very much, Ed. It was a pleasure to be in your talk show again. And have a great day as well. And see you soon somewhere. Thank you very much. I love having you on the show. Thank you. So Bye -bye. do I. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thanks.